Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Hanna Kaleova. I work as a medical doctor and researcher at the Institute for Clinical and Experimental Medicine in Prague, Czech Republic. And first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me. I'm happy to be here with you and to share some of the results from, from our study. We have a difficult topic and only 10 minutes to go, so I will do my best. So first, uh, uh, this uh, work was supported by Ministry of Health uh, of, of Czech Republic. Uh, I have no uh, conflict of interest. Uh, what are the persistent organic uh, pesticides, uh, the organic uh, pollutants, uh, so-called POPs? They are man-made chemicals. Uh, and they have been shown to increase the risk of cancer, but also metabolic disease, including uh, obesity and diabetes. Uh, although uh, their production has been worldwide limited, uh, they have been still accumulating um, in our environment due to, they, due, due to their uh, lipophilicity and also due to their resistance to degradation. <clears throat> you are probably aware of some of them like polychlorinated biphenyls, PCBs, or uh, organochlorine pesticides, OCPs. Um, from um, the human production through the uh, wastewater, uh, the, the plants are exposed and uh, that's a reason that uh, why so many people say, well, you cannot encourage people to eat vegetables and fruits because they are contaminated. Uh, however, only a few people um, realize that due to the uh, lipophilicity, um, they accumulate especially in animal products, in the fatty foods. Um, of course, these chemicals are in, in the environment, in low concentrations, they are also in the air and in water, uh, and uh, in low concentrations they are in plant foods, uh, but they accumulate throughout the food chain and the highest concentrations uh, are on the top of the food chain. Uh, the richest sources of of these uh, organic pollutants, of these pops, are contaminated foods, especially fish and seafood, also meat, and in lower concentrations, also milk and dairy products. So uh, our rationale was, well, in the vegetarian diet, when you exclude all these main sources of pops, um, would, this in, would this decrease the exposition to POPs and uh, the plasma concentrations of them? Uh, POPs have been shown to be related to obesity, metabolic syndrome, and increase also the risk of diabetes. So the aim of our study was to compare the effect of a vegetarian diet compared to a conventional diabetic diet with the same uh, caloric restriction. Uh, the, the diet uh, went for three months on serum concentrations of POPs in patients with type 2 diabetes. And we wanted uh, to explore um, the relationship between uh, POPs and the parameter parameters of diabetes. Uh, this was a secondary analysis from our previously published study. So only briefly, we used a design of an open parallel randomized study we divided the patients into two groups to follow either the vegetarian diet, which was a, was a lacto of a vegetarian diet, with only limited uh, intake of dairy to uh, up to uh, one low-fat yogurt a day, or the control group according to the official recommendations. 
the caloric restriction was the same and we measured all the anthropometric and laboratory parameters. We also measured insulin sensitivity by hyperinsulinemic isoglycemic clamp. And uh, we assessed the beta cell function uh, by five point um, meal test. And we measured uh, visceral and subcutaneous fat by magnetic resonance imaging. We measured uh, ser serum concentrations of 44 POPs uh, by high resolution gas chromatography and mass spectrometry. For statistical analysis, we used um, repeated measures ANOVA and um, multivariate regression model for assessing the relationships uh, between uh, the changes of serum POPs and uh, the metabolic parameters. Our study group consisted of 74 patients with uh, type 2 diabetes treated by oral hypoglycemic agents uh, who were matched in um, age body mass index and HbA1c. Um, the vegetarian diet contained uh, less, much less cholesterol, uh, however the caloric content was about the same uh, in both diets. Also the analysis of the food records from the patients revealed that the energy in intake was comparable in both diets and they really differed in cholesterol intake. Uh, to our disappointment, we didn't detect any differences uh, in serum concentrations of measured POPs uh, between both diets, except for PCB-169. Uh, uh, however, uh, we tried uh, to find the association between the changes uh, in serum POPs in the predictors uh, with explained variables, uh, the metabolic variables, and you can see that we detected a significant relationship b between 15 POPs and HbA1c, insulin secretion as one of the parameters of beta cell function, and fasting plasma glucose. After adjustment for changes uh, in BMI and visceral fat, you can see that uh, BMI didn't play any significant role uh, and there was a trend uh, toward uh, a role of visceral fat. However, the trend was not statistically sig significant. Another question we asked uh, was then, uh, which of the POPs are the most important that play a role uh, in these uh, parameters of diabetes? Uh, so uh, we took each of the parameters separately and uh, the circled ones are the eight most important ones related both to HbA1c, to fasting plasma glucose and also to insulin secretion as one of the parameters of beta cell function. So in summary, uh, we didn't detect any difference between both diets in regards to serum concentrations of uh, POPs. However, we found a significant association between changes of serum concentrations of POPs and changes in HbA1c, fasting plasma glucose and insulin secretion independent on changes in BMI. And also, uh, we were able to identify eight most important POPs associated with diabetes. Uh, seven of them are uh, from the group of PCBs and one of them is from OCPs. In conclusion, uh, the long-term exposition to POPs may exert diabetogenic influence due to their toxic effect on beta cells. And finally, I would like to thank my colleagues. I would like, like to uh, thank for, your, for their support. And uh, I hope that we will prove to be smarter uh, than how the Native American can, can see us. And I hope that we will not have to look for other planets uh, to, to have a place to live. Thank you for your attention.